up? What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 170 of Value Town. I'm Chan Man V, and he is Gara, and we've got the lovely Cora joining us today for the first time. What's up, Cora? Hey, I'm excited to finally be here. Yes, yes. We've been trying to get you on for a while now, so you've been such a busy person casting so many different events, Hearthstone or not even Hearthstone. So um, I'm glad we finally got a chance to to find a free week to have you on here. Yes, hopefully it will be the first, but not the last. So first I'm excited not. to talk about a bunch of new stuff today. It's going to be cool. Yeah, week one after the the balance changes, man, and it's pretty wild right now there's a lot of stuff going on so um yeah definitely a great week to have you on here gara how about you man how have you been i'm doing great a lot of appointments doctor appointments accountant appointments and whatnot oh, but besides that IRL. just dreaming and lettering every day <laughs> yeah <laughs> nice nice end of the month of course so it's always a lot of craziness going on here but we'll, we'll definitely be talking about that um, before we get started, I just want to uh, let everybody know that, of course, uh, Value Town is an hsreplay.net show, and so definitely go and check out some stats or uh, the latest meta on hsreplay.net. Also, uh, we are sponsored this week by ShipStation, which is an awesome shipping service. If you are uh, you know, a, an owner of any type of store or, vent, you know, or a vendor of any sorts, uh, we'll definitely talk some more about that a little bit later, but um, you know, really appreciate those guys sponsoring the show. Uh, we'll start off this, uh, just like we always do, talk about what we've done this week um, in terms of Hearthstone or whatever. Uh, Cora, yeah, what, what have you been up to? Have you just been playing Standard? I know you were playing Arena for a long time, mm -hmm. so um, did you switch over to Standard recently? Yeah, so last uh, last season I went hard for Arena for like the last week of the season and got on the leaderboard, which was really fun, nice. but then um, went into tryhard mode a little bit. So I, I got back from DreamHack Tours about a week and a half ago. Mm -hmm. and that was right after the balance changes hit so since then i've been pretty much doing nothing but playing hearthstone streaming a little bit here and there um and i played exclusively shutter walk shaman for about four <laughs> days nice. and just trying to figure out the intricacies of the deck and figure out which builds i like best and actually managed to get up to about top 50 legend with it i think i peaked at like 45 and that's um, crazy I've fallen since then i'm playing a bunch of different stuff now and trying to get ready for dreamhack austin but yeah. yeah, just been having a lot of fun experimenting with a bunch of new stuff. There's just so much that's viable right now um, that it, it's difficult to to sort of pin down what the best deck to play is, but it's a lot yeah. of fun. Right here, yeah. What was your win percentage with Shutterwalk? It was something like 65%. God, it was pretty nuts. That's I think crazy. I, had a, wow. I was about rank 500, and then I won like 10 in a row. That's crazy. To get up to top 100, it was pretty... Nice. It was pretty cool. Yeah, impressive. Because that's Shutterwalk... Actually, yeah, go ahead. Go insane ahead. impressive. Yeah, very few people can do that. I mean, the average right now is the the average right now is below fifty. So, I mean, it's just barely below fifty. So it's it's close to being a climbable deck. But the fact that you were way over that that is very impressive. Really, really cool. It's a very difficult deck to play. Mm -hmm. It's very yeah. difficult to play, and I think there's so many different um, archetypes for it right now. You can play Hemet, you can play Murmuring Elemental, yep. Kalisath. It's just we, we haven't had enough time to figure out what the best type of Shutterwalk Shaman deck is, but I think we're going to be seeing a lot of it at DreamHack Austin. Yeah. So I'm excited to see deck lists are sort of starting to come out now um, because the submission deadline was a couple hours ago. So I'm excited to see what people um, have really, I guess, theory into crafted. It. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, the latest iterations of Shutterwalk have been making it more and more difficult to be in that deck. You know, before it was just like, oh, you just aggro it down, no big deal. Now it's mm -hmm. like there's a lot of annoying cards that make it a, a little bit harder to to just bully down with uh, aggro. So, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to see what happens there in, in DreamHack. Uh, Gar, how about you? Have you have you been playing Shutterwalk or are you trying a different set of decks? Yeah, a lot. That's why it's so impressive. For me, it's probably more impressive than for a lot of other listeners because I played around top 100 Legend Shutterwalk for like four days mm -hmm. and it's a very powerful deck, but it's a very difficult deck. Especially, you need to learn all the different matchups and you have so many different approaches depending mm -hmm. on your list. Like if you play Hagata and whatnot, mm -hmm. and you always have to count your hand, you always have to look yeah. for all sorts of different win conditions. It's really like one of the harder decks to play right now, if not the hardest, just because of how many options you have, mm -hmm. the overload and whatnot. And there's a lot of very difficult matchups like, um, yeah, Druid in general is very difficult. I think all of the Druid archetypes are difficult. So mm -hmm. reaching top 15 is not easy with Shadow Shaman. Um, I played a lot. Actually, I played, I think, every archetype 
<laughs> that sounds crazy, but yeah, I've, I I <laughs> no, I took cool. one day of streaming because I I I dropped to dumpsters I think three days ago, and I just couldn't find a deck to climb with. I played even warlock. I played all different hunter decks, shaman, everything, and I just couldn't climb. <laughs> so I I went over every archetype till I discovered some nice decks to climb. Today I played Maligos through it, and I had Good eighty percent win rate with in fifty two games. Oh and, no, and now I'm <laughs> now I'm top 100, and I will continue playing that for the next 24 hours, and see how far I can go. I gotta, actually, yeah. gotta hurry before it swings on you, man. <laughs> no, Get those good. wins, man. Get as many as you can. It's a very good deck. Yeah. It's actually it's so interesting because there's so many niche decks that are kind of undiscovered right now, which are extremely mm -hmm. powerful. Uh, like we mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. it's just. The, the um, power, overall power level is relatively low, mm -hmm. so yep. yeah, it's you see a lot of frustration on Twitter, especially with a lot of pro players because they can't figure out uh, what to play because you can't just net deck one deck on HS replay how you used to do, and then just do well with it. So you have to think and maybe come up with own new decks. So people that are not generally good deck builders, there's a lot of pro players that are not good deck builders but extremely good. Mm -hmm. Yep players like at mastering a deck so they have to wait for other people to come up with the deck and copy the deck and then probably end up playing the deck better than the the person who made it. the deck yep. so it's kind of yeah. interesting how that works yeah so that that's the big question right now is is this a good meta i mean or is this environment where there's I mean, there's literally 10 to 15 decks in tier two, you know, like which, which is by far the, the most we've seen maybe ever, like in, in a, at least a very, very long time. Um, is this type of environment better than when you see, you know, just a, a few decks that are dominating? Uh, Cora, yeah, what do you, what do you, what's your take on it? Because it sounds like, Gara, you like it. I like it too. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's a time in Hearthstone where we have, you know, more creativity mm -hmm. than a lot of the players are used to, and they're kind of uncomfortable with that. Yeah. They're kind of uncomfortable with the the inability to just look at the meta and say, these are the four best decks, and this is the lineup that makes the most sense because these are the strongest decks. You can't really do that right now because there's so much subjectivity in the mm -hmm. meta right now. I think the tiers are a lot closer together in quality than they normally are. Usually there's a big gap between tier one and tier three. Right now, I wouldn't say that it's quite as obvious as it normally is. I personally like that because it means that players like myself can, you know, mess around with Shutterwalk Shaman, get really good at it, and just, you know, go right to the top because people don't know how to play properly against some of these more obscure decks. But I think that a lot of the pro players are, like I said, kind of uncomfortable with it right now, and that's why they're, they're not really um, big fans of this kind of meta. Yeah, and just to uh, really take a look at the point that you made there. Oops, um, that's not the right website. If we we can, if you actually look at the tiers, you can see that um, at, at least for ranks uh, rank five to legend, or you can even just like a legend, either, either one. Um, you can you can kind of see like your point there. There's like Malagos at five, like fifty four percent here, and then there's a bunch of things in that fifty to fifty two point seven range, right? So. We've got quite a few decks in these first two tech, two two tiers, so um, you know picking a lineup, say for our, for DreamHack or or whatever, it, it's not very easy to figure out what those are with, unless you study the matchups mm -hmm. and and everything like very very closely. Um, so yeah, you know it, it's like people complain when there's a few decks that are dominating, and then people complain when there are too many decks. That, so what does the community actually want <laughs> if? This isn't a good environment. Sounds like for them. they just want to complain. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. No, I, I personally love this. This is this is great. Like I, I think that every class is um, pretty well represented. You know, I think Mage is the only thing that that really doesn't have a crazy strong deck um, at this moment. And I'm, I'm sure some people would even argue against that, right? And maybe Dr. J would argue against that. I don't know. Like he was on a couple weeks ago talking about Mage. But um, but right now, I mean, we talk about recruit. There's like actually a rec you know a recruit warrior that's you know so so, but it definitely has its its uh, matchups that it can win pretty well. Hunter was like the hunter and shaman were the classes that we were just trashing on before the the, mm -hmm. the balance changes. And now look, I mean, we've got even pa shaman. We've got the shutterwalk shaman that Cora was talking about. And look at these these hunters. We got spell hunter, recruit hunter. We got tides hunter that we're going to talk about in a second with the death with the um, kind of death rattle um, cube combos that we've seen 
so it, it's wild right now. This is I don't think we've ever seen this outside of like the few first like week of an expansion, but I don't think we've seen this kind of reaction to like a week after a balance change. I can I can actually give very good examples of the upcoming tournament meta because I was helping a lot of people prepare for Dreamhack Austin. Okay, yeah. Uh, to to see uh, um, power level comparison right now the two strongest decks which the tournament meta evolves around is even warlock and token druid mm -hmm. and you can compare them to even paladin before the nerfs and q block and even paladin and q block were so much harder to beat than token druid and mm -hmm. uh, yeah even warlock so so we have a significant power decrease and i can explain also the general frustration because i also experienced it myself now for about a week is the matchups feel extremely polarized uh, with token druid and mm -hmm. even lock and maybe miracle rook because those are like the three most popular decks on ladder it's like if you play against token druid you always lose to it with whatever you play if you don't have a removal for the soul of the forest combo mm -hmm. and a lot of the classes really don't have a good way or any way to deal with that so let's say you know you play your quest warrior whatever with warpath you will destroy token druid but if you play let's say mage you have no way to deal with it and then you just lose pretty much every time yeah and the same goes for like you play priest with um psychic scream you can deal with all the tokens but then you face miracle rock and you just lose so you have like yeah. a lot of these rock paper scissor scenarios yeah where people which causes a lot of frustration, I would say, to most players. It's it's really frustrating to go into a matchup that you know that you have no chance of winning. <laughs> um, and you know, speaking from my experience with Shutterwalk Shaman, you can't beat Token Druid. You just can't do it. Yeah. But you also cannot lose to Warrior. It it just doesn't happen. Right. So it's it's really frustrating to know that I'm playing this deck well and I know this deck can perform, but if you just run into a string of, of unwinnable matchups, doesn't matter how good you are at the game, it's like the game's working against you in certain ways. Yeah. So I know that, you know, regardless of how much diversity we have in general, I don't think anybody likes it when you have that kind of hopeless feeling yeah. in certain matchups. It's like Freeze Mage Control Warrior all over again. Yeah, the, the I, polarization... I really like, by the way, that you said that you can't beat token, token Druid. This is why I stopped playing <laughs> Shadow Workshop. You can't beat it! Yeah. I lost seven times in a row to token druid. I'm like, I just couldn't figure out what to do. <laughs> I, I think it's like a twenty percent matchup. It's like you can put in wild pyromancer and maybe you have a chance, but it's it's just so <laughs> I was hard. thinking the same. It's like the only yeah. thing. Yeah, but you know, it's if Shadowwalk could beat token druid, then it would be, you know, like another tier even higher. So yeah. it, it's you know, the polarization thing, it's a it's like a double edged sword because I, I think the the actual gameplay when you have those type of matches is terrible because you you already know that you're you have a very high chance of losing. But at the same time, I actually think that planning lineups and things for events that that those type of dynamics actually makes it really interesting as to like what to bring and like how are you going to navigate that or how are you going to actually weigh the the probability of you running into that and you know you just accepting that loss and and figuring out you know how to come up with a best lineup that way. So from a competitive standpoint, I actually think it's gr kind of a cool thing. It's a cool thing, especially when the meta is not very clear right now. And there's a lot of, like, the power level's low, and there's a lot of decks that, that can, you know, win in, in certain, you know, just in a lot of scenarios. Um, but like you said, I think when it comes to, say, just the ladder and just like, the gameplay, it, it, does, mm -hmm. it does suck that way. Um, you know, I, I think that... Uh, you know, it's going to be really interesting to see what DreamHack, like what kind of lineups actually end up um, doing well at DreamHack, because I think we're going to see a bunch of a different uh, strategies going into it. You know, I think, Cora, you were telling me some of the lineups that you saw. Like, what were some of the, some of the things you saw? Um, a lot of what Garo was saying. I'm seeing a lot of even Warlock, a lot of Token Druid, um, a fair amount of Rogue as well. But then a good amount of Shutterwalk Shaman. I did see... Um, a couple of warriors as well, yeah. which I didn't really know what to expect. Okay, so here for an example, this is um, Luker's lineup. I don't know if you're familiar with Luker as a player. Mm -hmm. uh, Shutterwalk Shaman, Cube Warlock, Recruit Warrior, and Spell Hunter. Okay. So a couple of, of things that you would expect. Spell Hunter, I think, is going to be really popular. Mm -hmm. But Cube Warlock over even Warlock is maybe 
a strange decision. And then seeing Recruit Warrior in any fashion, I'm really excited for it, but yeah, I'm also yeah. I'm kind of surprised. <laughs> well, Recruit Warrior does well against Token Druid. Um, yes. Just, there's, that's one of the few classes that does super well against Token mm -hmm. Druid. Yep. It's, uh, but it's the combination is weird, Recruit Warrior and Spell Hunter. It, like, yeah. Yeah. In any tournament format, you basically have a lineup that is weak to a ban or like good against a deck that you leave open and the combination of bringing a warrior and hunter the same lineup is it's not mm -hmm. very I mean the ban wouldn't great. just given that there's so many good druids right now, isn't the ban just druid right now? Because you can't prepare for the different kinds of druids. Like the taunt druid versus a token druid, that's no, a very hunter, big difference. Well, Except you bring Katarina Hunter and you face Taunt Root. Oh. And you have a good chance. Oh. So here's the really? thing. Okay. At, um, at DreamHack Tours, deck lists were open for the entirety of the tournament. So right. I'm wondering, I don't have confirmation yet, but I'm wondering if they're going to be doing the same thing, in which case deck lists are open for all of the Swiss, and then band strategy becomes, I guess, that much easier in certain ways because you know exactly what you're up against. Yeah. Well, they're typically open, right? Like I thought, I thought the the deck lists were always open. Mm -hmm. um, okay. They opened up in top sixteen for DreamHack, but before tours, they were never open for Swiss. Oh, okay. I see. I see. Um, hmm, I'm, yeah, that's yeah. I, I think th so. If they are open, then yeah, it should be pretty straightforward. Um, I think that I don't know, man. It sounds like Token Druid's definitely going to be running just because a Token Druid can get you the free wins. I feel like a lot yeah, of people take sweep, that strategy. It can yeah. sweep. It has like mm -hmm. probably the biggest sweep potential. If you don't have a deck that beats it, uh, like you have to address it. Like you can't even not token it. No matter what, yeah. you either ban it or you have decks that beat it. It's like yeah. it's that powerful, for sure. Okay. And what is interesting for me about cube block is if you compare it to even look, I think it comes down to the mirror. Who actually wins the mirror? Okay. Because because it's probably the second most powerful deck. Mm -hmm. And of like what we've seen in the past, oftentimes it comes down to the mirror, and I'm super curious about this mirror, like who's favorite actually, because I've seen uh, all sorts of different opinions about it. I would say even Lock has like a good edge because of the giants. Yeah, you get the giants out down on three instead of four. Yeah, yeah, and that can already win you the game. But then again, you have no faceless. Right? Like you also have weapon removal. It's just interesting because yeah the, the even lock is i mean we're, we're definitely going to talk about some decks just some surprise decks and even lock was one of them um but that that's been definitely a revelation is that that deck just really zoom into the top and the the turn three giants i mean that's just dreams right there everybody's been dreaming for a while wishing that why can't i just coin and just like put this thing just put this guy down well now you can right with the fact that you can uh hero power on one so um, yeah, that's that's definitely been a deck that, you know, outside of the giant play, is that deck th effective outside of that? Because I like had a hard time playing that deck, and I, and I still say I don't quite understand all the the facets of it right now to win a lot with it. So I kind of was curious what y'all's opinions and minus the giants, like how strong of a deck is it? Like I had, I played against it a lot. I played tested with Strifeco a lot, and it, it's so cool because this is actually a mid-range deck. It's not a control yeah, deck. right, exactly. And, and, so and it's like yeah. I think Mitsuhiro also tweet, tweeted late, um, I think today or yesterday about this control meta and how aggressive control decks. We absolutely don't have a control meta right now. I would definitely say we have a mid-range meta. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think control decks in general are pretty bad right now. I no. okay. I, I couldn't even think of what is the best control deck right now. Is that Shadowbox Shaman, which is not even a control deck? It's like a combo. It's more deck. of a combo deck. Yeah, yeah, I mean maybe Quest Priest is pretty thoroughly control, as well as Taunt Druid, F like Fury Hunters, um, Warrior. But you can't even really call Taunt Warrior a control deck. Yeah, I guess yeah, Taunt Druid is. Quest yeah. Priest has it's... dropped off in the last few yeah. days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so much. It's hard to say what control is these days versus just value decks because. Even mid-range decks have great value right now with the the mana cheats and and the recruiting and just all all of that stuff right now. So it, the definition of decks is getting very difficult. Um, but yeah, but coming also back, very little pure aggro. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, what do you call aggro now? Rogue, I mean for sure. Burn mage, I guess. Rogue, right. 
Odd Rogue, Baron Mage. <laughs> and they, they still draw every card if possible. Like, <laughs> it's yeah. Cool to put the... That's yeah, yeah. You by turn. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, okay. Well, why don't we take a look at just some of the the meta? You know, just kind of what we 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 we've done before, uh, at least last week and this week. So first thing we're gonna do, just take a look at the power rankings, how they've changed in the last week, and that's uh, of course the win rates for each class as well as the class popularity. And um, if just glancing at it, you can still see that there's not, uh, you know, a, a straight convergence yet from both of these lists you know like eventually when the meta settles down these lists will pretty much look the same at least in terms of the rankings uh, but we still see some differences here one thing's for sure is the druids are on top on both of them so the druids are winning the most and they're the most popular which is not a surprise given that there's like so many good druid decks you can't really go wrong like in terms of what you play there uh so that's obviously going to play into popularity too when there's so many different decks um anything surprise you here i mean we, we went from the warlock and paladin being at the bottom last week you know like a, a knee-jerk reaction to it kind of rising back up to top three here i am surprised that paladin's win rate is so high when its representation is so low yeah the odd paladin seems to be doing super well though it's not that yeah. it's not being played a ton but it's it's wins a bunch i think people mm -hmm. are still tired of playing paladin <laughs> <laughs> They want something different. I yeah. Don't blame them. Yeah. Hunter stayed solid there at four. Yeah. Which is. Thank definitely God. Good. Rexar deserves it. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. With the uh, the spell hunter and the the recruit hunter, which Gara played on like day one. Remember, <laughs> like the, the expansion. We were talking about that recruit hunter. It's like starting to pick up steam again for whatever reason. Um, let's see. I'll what play else? It again. It's, it's not very it's, good when I play it. It's so <laughs> overpowered, actually. If you face any slower deck, you destroy them. You absolutely annihilate them. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's not even close. Tide's version was Katarina better. Katarina is so broken. Yeah. It's so broken. It's Kat not even Kat funny. Oh, Katarina, yeah. And and um, what is it called? The one mana spell. The oh, the, the play dead? Uh, play, the play dead. dead. It's so broken. Play dead is naturalized you. for no penalty, basically. It's like a one basically. mana umbra. <laughs> yeah. It's a one mana umbra. It's yeah. so broken. Yeah, it is. Yeah, one mana umbra. That's a good that's a better example. And then you get yeah. like a one mana double high man and you still have a cube with two high man. It's, it's broken. You do it on curve. <laughs> Well, I didn't like play. I didn't play high main in that deck. Actually, I was. It's I was, so broken. Yeah, yeah, it is I really good. I got to lose auto lose to aggro. Like else, this would yes. be so precious. <laughs> yes, you do auto lose to aggro, which is why I stopped playing the deck. Yeah, yeah. You can sometimes you can get lucky with some traps and get you through, but yeah, for the most part, there's there's still no answer. Hunter still has no answer for like, for Hunter, aggro decks. Like that deck, mm -hmm. I was beating three Hadronoxes like with a full board of taunts because yep. you can just. Kill the minions with your minions. Dude, the best is you when you so get many... charged minions and you die frenzy them and then you Katarina yeah, them so and you're broken. just like, oh, baby, this is you amazing. Cube, uh, Cubing Katarina them. And then... and yeah, it's like, it's, it's, yeah, it's definitely amazing whenever you can get that kind of run. But that that's the thing with Hunter, right? Like the, I feel like the back end of Hunter, the, the late game of Hunter is our already established and clearly the values there with the, um, with Rexar plus all of these awesome combo abilities at the end. It's just the early game is where the gaping hole is for Hunter, and there's no way around it. It's like I don't know how to what to do. You can't you can't Doomsayer through it. You can't unleash the Hounds because it's too small. It's it's too weak, and the traps are are not the greatest either. So kind of stuck I, I, there. I, I, I can mm -hmm. see problems in the already with the next expansion. It must be it's so hard to work the It's already so powerful, and it had look at the class. It's so bad. And the same with Hunter. It's like if you get any good early game, like one good two drop, and it will be busted. It will be like classic speed level for sure. Yeah, you're, you're roboting on us a little. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's it's the server or not, but um, uh, but yeah. So uh, let's see. Popularity wise, like what do you, what do you, anything surprise you here? Uh, Mage still seems to be, you know, quite a bit higher than it's reflected in the win rates. I mean, the win rates are. I mean, it's it's by far the lowest. I would say it's even out of the range of of the other eight. You know, like the the eight, eight are only what is that about three percent top to bottom. You know, like the high range to the low range there, and then you have mm -hmm. mage like two percent below that. So um, I guess people still aren't convinced that mage is not good right now. 
didn't think it was that bad. <laughs> yeah, you, I mean, you I've, said like I've big spell mage. I've lost to aggro mage enough times on okay. ladder that I'm like, this can't be that bad. And I know a lot of people were trying to make big spell mage work again. Yeah. I don't know. Well, what surprises me definitely is priest. Because Priest was one of the top three classes before the nerfs, mm -hmm. and it was the most hype around it. And I think it was Orange's best performing deck at when he won Titan as well. So there was like so much hype, and it wasn't nerfed, like it was buffed indirectly, and that it's still like nobody plays it and it's performing so poorly. I think people so were is... playing it last week, and it was, it was I mean, it was still performing poorly for whatever reason I, I think we are seeing a little bit of an uptick with it right now though like just with with some um yeah, combo type of priests uh, i don't know it's if like it's... people are not pinpointing what the problem is right, with right exactly now. they're just trying all kinds of different things but um yeah it, it priest still has com plenty of tools I, I think to to uh figure out something good they don't have as quite as many mana cheat or they might not even have any mana cheat right now do they i i'm trying to think of any cards Resurrect. right now Resurrect. i mean resurrect yeah. that's that's value though that's not as much it, as mana cheating they still have shadow essence yeah that the shadow <laughs> essence is <laughs> yeah shadow essence is random like it's a little it's a lot of rng that like or can be there, a lot of rng there's a little bit of like radiant elemental prophet felon yep spell damage otk yep that's stuff what i've seen mm-hmm with shadow essence but yeah yeah kind of gimmicky yeah seems seems kind of weak there and uh it's it's reflecting reflected here at least um and then see anything else here warrior warriors i guess warrior's not too far it's definitely the least popular by by a lot um priest and warrior i would say are significantly less popular <laughs> um okay well hunter yeah, Hunter and Druid, man. Everybody wants to play those two classes. So uh, hopefully that, that continues. Uh, I, I put together the top five decks, too, just for, in the last, like, 24-hour period earlier today. And um, Paladin's not on here. Everybody's like, well, where's the Paladin or whatever? Because, they're you know, if they look on the site. Um, it, if you add, like, another 12 hours or another 24 hours, Paladin <laughs> actually is in this list. But if you actually just look at the last 24-hour window, this is kind of what it looks like, which is four druids and a shaman basically but mill druids on here so th that's that's like ac that's actually number one there was like 700 games with it and yeah <laughs> it was crazy so um uh oh. that deck is i have you know i haven't really played too much of the mill druid i played a lot of the the mill warlock but i, I hadn't gotten a chance to play too much have you guys tried it out much like azelina yeah. and yeah how is it like, uh, I was playing the, the deck in the middle mainly, and mm -hmm. what is interesting is that people played around the deck on the far left while I was playing the deck in the middle. It's like people <laughs> conceded randomly because they thought I had Torgo. Yeah, dude, but I'm, totally. <laughs> yep, yep. It's actually super high skill cap because you you, mm -hmm. you might think it's always like Azalina Torgo. No, no, no. Like you have, you sometimes mm -hmm. you just empty your hand very fast and then you play Azalina. Yep. And in the mirror, you have a lot of druid mirrors, by the way. Now, spoilers. Uh, <laughs> if the opponent druid draws faster, then you never want to togwoggle. Then you want to kind of outvalue him through just as a Lena. It's really weird. There's a lot of different kind of stuffs you want to do. It's it's hard to play. It's kind of like Shadowrock Shaman. Mm -hmm. It's interesting, but I didn't have like this crazy win rate. I was playing the deck and I was like, yeah, it's it's kind of okay, but not crazy. Yeah. So, I mean, this might be just a total streak, you know, a little aberration in it, but, you know, it is what, what showed up in the stats here. Malagus Druid definitely has been doing much better, like, in terms of, like, comparing the two. Uh, but they do look very similar. <laughs> like, they, there's a lot of yeah. things that would make you think that it, it was the, the same deck. Um, but, yeah, you know, with I the think... Warlock one, with the Warlock uh, mill deck, it was very similar in the fact that the, you know, like, about 20% of the games, if, if you're playing the deck at the highest range, I believe like 20% of the games are the ones that you win without doing the combo. So learning how to win those games, I think are, is super important to, to having a, um, you know, a correct or a good win rate for this deck. So, um, you know, people winning it with 60% obviously understand those conditions, I think better than the, the folks that haven't played it much. You think Azelina will ever have value that's not King Togwaggle? Yeah. 
You already play her in um, the Fury Hunter Control Warrior. Granted, that was sort of as a nod to Rin. Right. But uh, it's not a bad inclusion in, in control decks in general, I guess. Mm -hmm. If you have a handful of removal that you're not... Maybe draw cards that you don't want to use because you're going to fatigue in a matchup. Yeah. I don't think she's bad at all. Mm -hmm. Again, just one of those cards is kind of underexplored right now. Yeah, I agree too. Like I, it, I kind of, I kind of look at her sometimes as like a like a divine favor with bo a body. You know, like it's yeah. it's a really co cool way to um, you know g generate the same type of uh, or have the same type of of card <laughs> engine at the end of a game, right? So um, or it doesn't even have to be an end of a game. Like maybe even an aggro deck like runs it for whatever reason. It might be uh, kind of interesting. Uh, let's see. Anything else here? Pretty much the job. Yeah, the other druids, like I said, like it's a, it's a druid world right now, and you can't really I go think that's wrong. Why the, <laughs> why, that's why the win rate of druid in general is so. I don't think I, yeah. I don't necessarily believe that these decks are just the best decks in the game, mm -hmm. but yeah. it's so hard to mulligan versus druid on leather. It's yeah. like you need a completely different hand against all of these decks. Yeah, it's like you counter them in completely different ways. Mm -hmm. And as you said, like. Or as we said earlier, it's like the the Maligos Druid and the Togwoggle Druid, they pretty much are almost the same list. It's mm -hmm. like you have to play against both at the same time. Till the very end, you see the, the weapon come down, and you still don't know what it is. And then suddenly you <laughs> die to Maligos 36 damage to the face. <laughs> yeah, you kind of play differently, too, against it, uh, d depending on what it is. It's not. I guess it's not too much, too different. It's definitely going to go to... Yes, yes of course. Like, against Togwoggle Druid, you want to draw your deck as fast as possible. Okay, sure. Because sure. then they, they can't switch. Uh, because it's not mm -hmm. like Togwoggle Warlock, which just burns your deck, like, because they ham it. There's no ham it in this yeah, deck. So right. if you draw faster, you can't get Togwoggle. But against Maligos Druid, you have to get out of range mm -hmm. hp wise yeah so you have to play different so do you think uh because there this is a time where druid there's so many good druid decks is this because the druid core package is just so good right now or is this because of various different tools that they have they just have so many of them that we can spread it out you know across five six good decks right now i think wild growth and nourish and just the ability to cheat the mana curve is, is Still always the same going answers. to make Druid viable. <laughs> and Ultimate right. Infestation, I want to add that. Yeah. My group, Nourish, Ultimate Infestation, you can play that in any Druid deck. It's just, <laughs> it's just too damn good. Like, they're, think about it. Their removal is not very good. Naturalize is a poor spot removal card, and Swipe is poor AoE. But it doesn't even matter, because they're on turn 8 while you're on turn 3, and, like, who, who, who cares? They just win. <laughs> That's true. Well, Tantra doesn't even play Ultimate Infestation, but they do play, you know, Wild Growth and, and Nourish. Uh, and Naturalize, <laughs> Naturalize, we use on ourselves. Like, we, they use on themselves. They don't even use it on the opponent. Mm -hmm. So, unless it's a giant or something like that. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I, I think that you might, you might be on to something right there. It's just those two cards still, <laughs> still an issue. And then, I guess the Oaken Summons, too. Oaken Summons is such a great card against uh, yeah. aggro right now that Everybody's running that. Um, yeah. You know what's even crazier? You play stacking guys so that Rick can't naturalize mm -hmm. his own minion. Yeah. <laughs> it's effective yeah, though, man. <laughs> it's effective though. It's so crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's, no, there's nothing like QQing <laughs> when, when you're taunt druid and somebody plays a skulking guys. <laughs> um, okay. Any, I guess, any other elements? Even Shum hasn't changed too much since last week. I think it, for the most part, looks the same. I uh, haven't really seen it. much of it. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I don't play against much of it either. Yeah, it still wins a lot. It's like Maybe maybe one in ten shamans I run into are even shaman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no. I definitely run into way more shutter, sh shutter walk shamans. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Uh, for a while, you know, like earlier this week, I played a ton of token druid. God, the deck is so good. Like on ladder. I wonder what happens it's, because it's so today good. people stopped playing it for some reason. <laughs> Yesterday well, was yeah. only talking to it the day. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I, yeah. I think there was a shift, right? There was definitely a significant shift to try to beat Token Druid, just because you know it was just having so much success. But it's one of those decks where you can literally be so far behind, and it just takes two turns, and then you win. <laughs> like you can literally turn around a a game completely if you get the the right two two cards at the right time, and um, 
not very many decks are like that right now. You know, like if you're behind, you pretty much get get wiped. Uh, I guess unless you're like Taunt Druids. I guess if you get Hydronox at the right time, you can you can come yeah. back from nowhere. That that matchup is like I think it's like fifty two percent for Token Druid. It's very close. Yeah, yeah. It, the the mirror. Hmm? What the mirror? Which matchup? Uh, token Druid versus Hadronox Druid. Token it's Druid like... is fair. Or not? Uh, token favorite? Druid is very slightly favored. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, I think, I think Token really Druid is. Yeah, I mean, look. I, I think it. I think that's right. I think it's like um, 52% when I looked this morning. It, it's close, though. Yeah, it's 52. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably because no spreading plague, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, spreading play play. I never get spreading plague when I play against a token druid. <laughs> I never get it. I seriously never get it, and I like mulligan for it, and so it, it's it's so frustrating. I I've had to double my check to see it. <laughs> I have to double check How it's in my you? deck. <laughs> like, oh man! But when you get it, it feels good. Man. Token druid is so frustrating for me. Just look at the list. It has like no threads. And it's so hard to actually counter the deck. A one one is a threat. Okay, and that... it's like this wild teacher. That's it. It's like and you can't beat it with most decks. He cleared five boards. There's no possible way he has another. Well, when you can do oh, wait, thirty on in addition to what you have on board with savage double savage roar, you're you're looking pretty good, you know. So I will, I will never forget the the match between Dog and Muzzy, mm -hmm. where Muzzy drew his entire deck. And then oh, there's his no eyes. possible way. Oh, and Doc had yeah, like every eyes. single removal of his That's deck. right, I remember that. Like too. double double warper, no, not warper, double whirlwind, double brawl, everything. Mm -hmm. It was so funny. Yeah. Pretty there's no possible way. <laughs> that's that's why the we'll deck's so good. More warrior. Yeah, I was talking to you about results. that last night, right? Like, I, I actually think that Warrior, we might, well, I, I guess we can see all the decks now. I, I was surprised I didn't see a, a few more Warriors in the, um, you know, I guess Dreamhack. But yeah, I, I I felt like Warrior would be a good way to counter a token. But I guess if they're not running token, then they don't need it. <laughs> you know, if token's yeah. not being run as much, or they're gonna ban to token druid, they don't even need it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. For for me, the most interesting thing is what's the best warrior deck? I don't know. It's actually so hard. Um, I don't know that you want to even run odd warriors right now because you can't have warpath so like generic taunt warrior with warpath is probably pretty good mm -hmm. recruit warriors a little bit more threat dense maybe a little bit better against warlock but i don't know there's no warrior deck that does everything right now yeah there's no warlock that attacks no warrior deck that attacks that early right now either. I guess you I guess you could build maybe a, a rush warrior that could pressure a little bit in the beginning, but for sure it's yeah. it's built for control. You think double dead man's hand these days or just one? That's been a big okay, question, so right? Maverick won Dreamhack Tours with double dead man's hand control warrior. Yeah. That literally had no win condition other than dead man's hand. And none of us saw it coming whatsoever and i think he went something like 26 and 2 throughout the tournament with Jeez. that deck a ridiculously good performance with that deck Crazy. so I, I am surprised that we haven't seen more of it i think that mm -hmm. people just don't want to play it on ladder because the games take 45 minutes and it's miserable <laughs> but i think that if people were willing to give up that much time i think the deck would be good can it beat how to it I'm good yeah, yeah. Yes, I've depending on what you shuffle because yeah. it plays it plays double battle rage as the draw engine now that cold lights are gone and i guess if you shuffle brawls and you do run a couple of silences it's tough though it it's real it. tough yeah i was also so surprised that nobody plays it like literally nobody mm -hmm. yeah you yeah, gotta you gotta balance that them. card draw with the just the the shuffling of it because you know back in the day we had cold light right and that was the way to to continue drawing just the cards that you end up shuffling now it's a little bit tougher battle rage like you said cora but if you don't run battle rage it's like man i have all these cards i just can't get to them <laughs> you know i can get to the weapons that's about all i can get to so it, it's it's kind of fun that way um okay well uh before we move on why don't we uh give a little bit of a shout out to our sponsor this week which is ShipStation. 
Uh, for those of you who never use ShipStation, I'd, I'd highly recommend it. You know, if you're selling anything online and you need to get your orders out the door, you know, obviously it can be really tough trying to figure out how to mail everything. And I don't know, some people even and do all the shipping themselves. Um, if you're in that situation, you definitely want to use ShipStation because they're the fast way to kind of manage all your orders and get them shipped out with a lot of the, the popular um, carriers around. So, uh, you know, the carriers that they they support right now are UPS, FedEx, USPS, and um, they also uh, support uh, shopping uh, or vendor sites like Shopify, Squarespace, Etsy, Big Commerce, WooCommerce, WooCommerce, and 75 other popular selling channels. Um, so, it, you know, again, like if you if you're having issues with that or it's costing you a lot of money, definitely to check out ShipStation. You can go right now and try ShipStation free for 30 days. And you can get an additional month, too, only if you use the promo code value town. So go to ShipStation.com, and I think at the top of the, the homepage, there's a microphone that you click on. Click on that, and then you type value town, and then that's all you have to do. And then you'll get that, that free month. You can try it out and, uh, you know, figure out if that's going to be the right thing for you. So ShipStation, make ship happen. Make ship happen is their, their logos. So thanks, ShipStation, for uh, sponsoring the show. And... Uh, Hopefully, we'll, we'll um, save some people some money or save some businesses money that are listening to Value Town right now. Okay, next, um, surprises. So what has been the biggest surprise for you so far in this week one? Any, anything? We've honestly played a bunch of decks, but anything that was just like, man, this is a, you know, maybe a discovery or something that you just didn't expect? I start Murloc Paladin and not Paladin. Murloc, Murloc Paladin. Paladin. Come on, not Murloc. Murloc Hunter is <laughs> working for me. Murloc what? Hunter? Hunter? Murloc no. Hunter? Are you serious? Yeah, yeah you what? play you play Beast and Murlocs and you curve out and you kill your opponent. What? Yeah, you play. Murloc's okay. Steady shot. I can show you the list. It's pretty good. All right. And I've doubted Gara many times, and I've come to <laughs> realize not to doubt him anymore. Every single time. Every time I've I play the deck. deck, it's so good. It's out of a good deck builder. Yeah, <laughs> yes, like, you are. You are. It's definitely. like, like because I play so many different decks. It's like when the deck is bad, I would not mention it, right? So all the bad <laughs> decks go unnoticed. Right, it's filters like, them out. A lot right? of them <laughs> that never get mentioned. And this, like, if you because you have a good curve, that's it basically. You play Midrange Hunter the way how the class is supposed to be played. Mm -hmm. You play Hydras, you play Highmans, and you play kind of the best curve. Uh, like you play, you have the good, the, the Diamol, you have the Murlocs, the one drops, the two drops, you have the war leaders. Yeah. The, the Totem Golem is the most important card because the Totem Golem counts as a Murloc and you can buff it with Houndmaster. So. But yeah, if you don't hit your curve, you lose. I think the deck needs only one more two drop, then it's really good. Because right now you have only four good two drops. You have um, the Rock Pool Hunter and uh, the Razor, Crackling Razor more. Mm. And if you want to play a powerful mid-range deck, you want to have at least six. You know, I didn't actually realize that. Yeah, the Amalgam is, is a beast and a murloc at the same time. It's so good. Yeah. That's kind of cool. It's so good. <laughs> I love that card. You can, man. like, <laughs> the Houndfast ate murloc only die it, and then Rockpool Hunter, you can do everything, crippling race on it, you just do everything, and then you kill Command because it's a beast as well. That's kind of <laughs> weird. That's kind of fun, actually. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. It's so funny. Yeah, yeah. That sounds that sounds good. It definitely sounds good. <laughs> now the amalgam, I, I've I've used the amalgam on and off here, and it's it's surprisingly good for a vanilla card, basically, right? That has just the versatility of tribe or just deck building. Um, in hunter, especially, it's always been that, that three drop leading into a four drop, whether it's you know houndmaster or anything like that. I, I've always felt that it was a solid card. Um, and then it just, you know, just gives you that beast qualifier too, which is really good for other cards. Okay. It's I'm going to have to try that then. I want to give that a, it's just the around. general curve is really, really low power level right now. Yeah. This is why like a curve hunter works basically. Yeah. It's just that it's inconsistent right now because there's like the next best two drop is so much worse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so hey, give me a second. Let me, let me, the, let me come back uh, into this channel real quick. Hold on. Give me a second. Yeah, then you have to go to the river crocolisks. <laughs> oh god, no, no, definitely don't want to be doing the crocolisk old style. Give me a second, guys. Trying to hopefully help with this robot-y sound. Okay, I think we're back now. 
Sorry, we get into a little bit of robot-y kind of sound. So uh, I think it might be the server that we're on. But um, Sounds like you're okay now. Okay, yeah, I think it's better now. Um, I was just saying, I think personally, I was surprised at how much I've enjoyed um, the combo play style now since the balance changes. I've never been a, a combo or an aggro aficionado. I've always mm -hmm. really enjoyed mid-range and, and long-style control gameplay. Mm -hmm. um, but I really, really enjoy the combo gameplay of the Shutterwalk Shaman. So, yeah. I don't know. It's discovered a, a new Hearthstone side of myself. It's like a puzzle, <laughs> trying to solve it. So, yeah, yeah it's and, definitely And fun. you probably enjoy that there's no more Icebook in the game. Oh my god, yes. <laughs> oh, oh gosh. Going to hit a mage in the face and being like, I can kill him, but what there's what if there's Icebook? And then you're like, wait, no, they're just dead every time. Yep, yep. So I, great. I have that double take all the time. Where just I have to like, dead. oh, no, no, they're dead. <laughs> they're actually dead. So this is good. It's so great. Yeah. Definitely. I've seen some ice barriers here and there, but that's about that's about all I've seen in terms of, of different secrets. Um, so the the tides could three and a hunter at the say, Gara. You know, you sent me somewhere recently. I just like seeing tides playing for for one. For first off, like it's just fun seeing right. tides playing Hearthstone again. Um, and then he, you know, the the Katharina deck. I was playing with it earlier. It's like really really fun because it, it's not the recruit one. It's um it's more of a cube death rattle one which uh, is is crazy, right? Like, this is, like, the second, maybe the third deck that we've seen with Cube being significant. Um, mm -hmm. The first one being Recruit Hunter, right? I think that was the one that we, we messed around with. Wait, was it Rec Wait, was it that one? I'm trying to remember. What, what's another Cube deck that, that's been super popular? Is Recruit... Recruit something, right? Is it just, was it just Druid and Warlock? Warlock? Yeah, I guess it was just Druid and Warlock, yeah. Yeah, so Cube the Taunt War Druid, yeah. So um, this mm -hmm. is like the third one that I guess we're seeing now, which is um, really cool with Play Dead. We knew Play Dead would be good eventually. We talked about it a little bit earlier, but think about it, guys. Play Dead with Cube, and then you got Katharina, and then you've got Dire Frenzy to restock on Beast. It's it's actually a load of fun. And um, I was thinking about making that deck of the week this week, but we just did Spell Hunter last week. We got to do something different this week for our, our patrons. Um, I crafted King Crush for this deck. Did you really? Okay. I spent 1600 dust on King oh, Crush for man. this deck. It was <laughs> worth be it. Good. It's so much fun. Yeah, totally. Last week alone, I crafted King Crush and King Togwoggle, and I was like, <laughs> on multiple servers. <laughs> <laughs> on multiple <laughs> servers. <laughs> no. I had to craft but have you knowledge. regretted it, though? Have you regretted no. it at all? That's right. But it's funny, though. Yeah, this might be the first time King Crush is actually worth. I mean, you actually get value from th that play because <laughs> before you'd actually have to use the mana to play King Crush. Never a good play. Definitely never a good play. I mean, my yeah. mana ate damage to your face. <laughs> it's okay sometimes. Unless you get it from something else, not actually putting it in your deck. Yeah. Uh, outside of that, surprises. I mean, just the variety of stuff has been, you know, I, I don't even think I've had time to even try to tweak anything myself. I, I've just been just trying to to test out each of these things that are good right now. So not, nothing else too much. And any cards, maybe, specifically? Any cards, like, you've had an aha moment with? Anything like that? For me, the biggest surprise is how good Maligo Street is because you just lose to a weapon remover. How can a deck perform so well that just gets destroyed by an ooze? It's 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 actually mind blowing. Nobody's playing them. Yeah, because none of the best decks are playing with more right now. Yeah. I think the biggest surprise is how difficult the meta is to counter. It's like when you know when nothing is broken, then everything is broken. It's such a favorite, uh, such a favorite. Yeah. I think from the biggest surprise, surprise is how difficult the meta. Is. It's like it's at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, I absolutely then, agree. Yeah, I, yeah, I think I agree and with that too. I, I really like that the open question we have is like, what is the best meta we can have? It's like, I just, even when I was struggling before now, today, I was struggling so hard and I didn't feel like it's a bad meta. You just notice it because you don't lose to a lot of stupid non-interactive stuff, right? You don't lose to Quest Rogue, you don't lose mm -hmm. to Rin, you don't lose to just stupid stuff, like Operative mm -hmm. getting your Jaina. It's like the meta feels fine. But, you know, you're still struggling, so. Yeah. Yeah. The, I don't know, the best meta, it'd probably be something to do with this type of power level, but with, with I guess, decks in each class that 
can can win all right like can that don't have can win any matchup like the worst matchup is like a 20 47 percent or something like that i think I that's think... right right because gameplay would then matter but then mm-hmm. what you pick for your deck doesn't matter very much and then that's a little bit of give and take there mm-hmm. I feel like a lot of the Hearthstone players who've been playing throughout the whole history of Hearthstone mm-hmm. all look back very fondly on the Patron Warrior, Handlock, um, Combo Druid, Secret Paladin era as being like the 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 most healthy meta that Hearthstone has had. And if you're even comparing this meta to that one, this one has so many more viable decks than that one did. So I, I wonder like what what is actually the sweet spot that we're really shooting for here? Is it one deck per class? So that makes, you know, ladder strategy a little bit easier, makes mulligan strategy a little bit easier. Mm-hmm. How much diversity is too much diversity, I guess? Yeah. Is what we're experiencing for the first time. That's a good point. Yeah. Like, that's a very good point for having just one good deck per class. Because then... You... So I think with that, we see that it's very mm-hmm. important to have a difficult deck to play where you can increase the win rate just by playing good. Like, yeah. like Shadowwork Shaman are pretty good. N- not many people can play it because if you misplay, you will have an awful win rate. Very few people can go to top 50 Legend Akura. It's just because mm-hmm. you have so many decisions and you need to know mm-hmm. all the matchups. And that's, I think, very good to have. This is why I didn't micro- mind Rasekus Priest. Because when Rasekus Priest was the best deck in the game, yes, it feels bad to lose against it, but so few people actually had the high win rates with it. Because you could misplay all the time and just lose with it. It was not just about drawing Raza and Anduin. Yes, that was a stupid mechanic, but it's about having a difficult deck to play, which is the best deck in the game. I think that's always good to have, like Handlock mm-hmm. or Patron Warrior or just these yeah. combo decks. I mean, but they can't be OP, like Q Block before nerfs. If it's mm-hmm. too OP that you can misplay and still win, that's not good. It has to be like super low power level, like the average. Yeah. I agree. So you can outplay your opponent type of like thing. Like Shadowbox Shaman yeah. sucks if you don't play it very well. <laughs> it's like Yeah, I, you know, I'm does. sure I, I, I bet Shutterwalk, if you look at the different, you know, skill ranges, probably changes quite a bit. It's hard to tell because, you know, you're playing people at the same rank too. So Shutterwalk, you probably don't see it significantly. It would be nice to have a way to to really differentiate um, you know, how well you're playing with it, you know, at the legend ranks versus like a a, a rank 20 player. Um, but it's tough because their games are, again, like in the range of uh, the same skill as, uh, as Look, them. Right before the nerfs, even Paladin was arguably the best deck in the game. Yeah. Like on, together with Q-Block. And yeah. it was, yeah. all pros, most pros agreed, because there's always like exceptions, I'm pretty sure, that the deck is too easy to play on like a very high level. Like, yes, you could yeah. always just be better, you know, play it perfect, but to get like these crazy win rates and play it on like very powerful level, it was too easy, like, for how good it was. And that's not good for the game. I think most people agree on that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. just, I think the even and odd decks themselves play into that curve stone type of thing. It's designed to be that. Like, your hero power's designed to fit into your curve early game and even fill holes, like, late game. So, it... I, I always was... I mean, when, it, when they, they came out with the concept of odd and even, I was hoping that would be like the accessible type of archetypes, right? That were that power level is decent, just not crazy good. But we what we've seen so far is that it's been crazy good so far. And I think that you know that can be be bad if they're the only good decks. Right now they're not. You know, right now at least with, with even Shaman, we, we we see other really good decks that are that aren't necessarily just curve stone. And and that's, that's a, good. That's a very good question. Like mm-hmm. what is the most difficult odd or even deck to play? I mean, Honestly, even Warlock is just Tapstone. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> and, all of them hard are. Hard Mulligan for Giant, and I mean, you get it about 50% of the time. I mean, Odd Paladin, Odd Paladin is, is super easy to play, too. Yeah. You know, just hero power to so get out that, <laughs> that you know, removal and then start playing your cards, you know? So, yeah. Probably Control Warrior. Oh, you oh, think yeah, the... Was... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Odd Control. The Odd Warrior. Warrior. Yeah. Hunters, warrior. Yeah, that's true. Let's see. I'm trying to see what what the choices are here. Uh, rogues, rogues, kind of similar to old rogue, just just normal aggro rogue. Um, odd hunter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think the warrior's the hardest. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, 
So it's dangerous, you know? Like, I think that that type of uh, making that sort of thing good is, is dangerous just because I think a lot of people can can build some of those. Like, like the Odd Paladin, I think a lot of people can build that Odd Paladin right now. It's not it's very cheap to make. Yeah, it's not out of range. All right, well, any, anyways, pretty cool meta right now. We'll see what happens in a week's time. I mean, maybe we're just still in a flux, and then, like, next week we'll actually start seeing things starting to settle and, and uh, you know, just the, the separation between even maybe Tier 2. Maybe Tier 3 will pick up some of these Tier 2 decks here, and, um, you know, we'll start seeing things start to, to um, uh, change a little bit because I think it will. Like, I don't think it'll stay like this forever. Like, I'd be really, really shocked if, like, we've never had anything like this stay for, like, even a month, I don't think. We've never had a meta that had this many decks. So, yep, I think we'll have to see what happens there. But speaking of, uh, I guess, some events that uh, are coming, we talked about DreamHack, obviously, coming up. But we had one that actually had this balance patch this past weekend, which was the Titanar um, uh, event in China, which was an Invitational. And congratulations to Orange for winning that. I think it was a 30,000 prize pool, so I forget exactly how much of that he got, but that's a good chunk of change for uh, you know, just this invitational type of tournament, but that's China for you. China has all these these amazing prize pools. Did you guys There's watch any of it? Yeah, exactly, right? Do you guys watch any um, of it? I watched a little bit of it. Um, I know Dr. J and Nostum were casting the majority of it. It was mm -hmm. kind of a weird time zone for me, um, so I didn't watch too too much but i i did hear a bunch of the guys talking about um rdo and orange specifically about what they were planning on doing going into the tournament because they didn't actually have time to oh god my cat um <laughs> to test the balance changes uh they just had to sort of submit the decks blind yeah oh he loves <laughs> attention and makes it very well known if you're not giving it to him <laughs> it's all good yeah. Um, so apparently yeah. it worked. <laughs> They're sure, at least for orange, yeah. it worked really well. Um, the uh, you can kind of see the breakdown here. I'll I'll show you the breakdown that uh, Hearthbone had here. Let me see at least what deck archetypes were brought. A lot of people brought Control Priest of all things, which uh, we haven't really seen very much of in in the uh, latter meta. Do we have some uh, old guardian breakdown? No, we didn't. At least it was not in time to get prepped for today. So uh, I think maybe Old Guardian's on vacation this week, <laughs> at least for this one. He works so hard. It would be so nice hard. to see the win rate of Priest. Yeah, yeah. definitely would be. But Priest, I, I, I don't. You foresee seeing a bunch of Priests this weekend? I don't. I don't think we're going to be seeing too much. Hmm. Actually, where's Orange? I... I asked a couple of my friends, um, mm -hmm. Dr. J, Racy, Sidonia, mm -hmm. what they thought of, of Control Priest. And they still think it's quite good, but the lineups that I've seen haven't had it. And um, my brother's competing in the tournament. We were messing around with the idea of him playing the Mind Blast Priest, and he was playing around with it on ladder, and he's just like, I just don't, I don't know, I don't feel like it's good enough against any single deck right now that it's worth bringing. There's other more polarizing decks that maybe fit better into the band strategy. I mean, well, I mean, this is an anti-token druid deck, right? Like, I feel like this was made to, to do well against it, like pyros and, and mass dispels, and you know, like obviously the psychic screams, and I, I feel like this is like a, a control deck that does well against that. But if you're just not going to play against it, then this is you know might struggle against all the other. Mm -hmm value-based control decks or even mid-range decks. This would be tough. Th what's your thoughts, Kara? Like in terms of what this is good against? Okay, for for me, for my lineup in mm. HCT, in the DreamHack Tours that I played in, yeah, um, Priest was my worst performing deck. But also, like in all the playoffs, Priest was one of, like, together with Tempo Mage, one of the worst performing classes. Right. And I think the strength continues. It's just, okay, if you look at Big Spell Mage, Big Spell Mage is very similar, I think, to Priest right now. It, it got insanely buffed indirectly by the nerfs, but at the same time, the new archetype that emerged are very good versus Big Spell Mage. So even though Big Spell Mage is more powerful, mm -hmm. like in uh, like on paper or whatever, in a nutshell, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. it's still weak against the meta and the same is with priest i feel like especially against all the druid archetypes it's super bad versus maligos druid or like taunt druid yeah every every druid control archetype has so much armor gain that yeah. just out uh yeah just out armors all the damage that the priest is available yeah and another problem is you can't win for if you go psychic scream against token druid you lose fatigue from what when i talk to people when they play tested it really they just play the deck then different yeah huh. because you get eight additional cards in the deck then you just go because you still play malfurion it's and they still have a lot of armor gain it's actually quite easy to out armor um the priest deck mm. and you can just remove everything they play so it's it's not that great of a matchup and there's also like all these random archetypes like uh what Tice was playing the 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 otk the dinosaur otk do dinosaur you otk that yeah, sounds the, the, pretty cool what, what is, is this <laughs> cube so devil sword druid oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. the recruit you yeah, can't the, you yeah. can't go psychic scream against it because they just redraw it and play till you're dead yeah and yeah it's like warrior you know all these control warriors and it's actually actually pretty bad against even lock because the giant comes down even faster you know and twilight drakes are also naturally pretty good against you and it's just fast it's like a mid-range deck you don't you know you don't survive till psychic scream the deck tries to kill you very fast and also hunt type was also always pretty good against priest the aggro decks like rook miracle rook especially is hard countering you miracle rook has a huge rise in popularity i just think it's a bad meta for priest even though the I like the class is not bad. It's just a mm. very bad meta for the class. Mm. Okay, yeah. So I. That's what I think. Yeah, I I yeah. agree with you. I don't I don't. It's hard to find a, a really good matchup for. It doesn't it right have now. good matchups. Like yeah. really good matchups. And there's just not much value. Like the Shadow Visions and the Curious Glimmer Root are the only real value plays. So. I think you have to play pretty different in like yeah in a value way, not mm. longer my blast. It's not the right meta for my blast. Yeah, that's why I was kind of thinking maybe we'd see some quest priest, just because it is the ultimate fatigue your opponent value deck um, with Archbishop Benedictus. Right. But then you you can't beat Shutterwalk Shaman, so that has to get your ban. But then you know you can struggle against Cube Warlock and just decks that you know are very aggressive that you don't have the ability to combat. So, Priest, I think, just has a few too many weaknesses right now. I don't think, you know, Mind Blast Priest or Quest Priest are bad decks mm -hmm. um, in a vacuum, but I just don't know that they really have a place in these lineups, especially in a Last Hero Standing format, where you you want decks that can win four times or three times in a row, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah, you need powerful decks, and these decks are just a little bit too... Meh. Yeah, there's there's just not very many good combos with priests. Question, like question. Value combos. Who wins? Benedictus Priest or Dead Man's Hand Warrior? Oh, I think... Uh, You go to turn time or nobody... Unless the rule is still player with more life at the um, 90th no, turn or whatever it is. The in priest which wins. The... Wouldn't the priest win? Is that including armor, too? It is including oh, armor. Oh, okay. That was just yeah. life. Um... um Okay. Yeah, I actually, I actually had my first ever um, draw as a really? result of the timer with in a quest priest mirror, and I was gonna win. My opponent was finally in fatigue because he played Benedictus, but then I Benedictus like the forty cards in his deck into mine, God. and took it like forty turns, um, and then we both lost. Sounds like so much fun. <laughs> it's heartbreaking. <laughs> Imagine in the event. I, for one, am not, I for one, am in not the event, bad people just literally. <laughs> roping on purpose like that's, that's literally awful. the worst matchup in the history of yeah. Arston, the quest priest mirror it sucks <laughs> swede is freaking out he's like if people are actually bringing quest priest our swiss rounds are going to take four hours we don't have a ruling on this what are we going to do yeah it, I I hope hope can. what can you do production. like what do you do you like i don't know set a timer on each round <laughs> There's not enough pressure in the deck to kill your opponent. Okay. You can't but, do it. As, as a tournament, what, what do you guys think, you know, as players, just setting a time limit to each round? Like, you have to finish by this time. Is that is that something people would game? Rule. or I mean, But, but yeah. what do you think about a rule that, like that? That is the ruling in Pokemon. In mm -hmm. Pokemon TCG, rounds are 50 minutes because right. they cram nine rounds of Swiss into a single day. Yeah, but they great. also have... They also have draws and ties 
Um, mm -hmm. So I think you would need to implement a draw system in Hearthstone somehow, and then that would you know change the, the tiebreakers. Um, and maybe you would just need like to convert wins, losses, and ties into a certain amount of points, and then have players hit that certain amount of points threshold to make it to like yeah you know day two or, or top yeah. cut. I don't know. That's kind of tough too because you can see people trying to. You know, like when they know they're going to lose, they're literally just roping just to try to get a draw out of it. And that's, yeah. that feels bad. There's, right? there's a lot of rules against slow play in Pokemon TCG, but you mm -hmm. know they're all abused. Mm -hmm. What if you both players got losses if they didn't finish, if they don't finish in time? Mm. I don't know about that. You probably get people you... just trolling. <laughs> like yeah, folks you... that know that they've lost just trolling the other guy. That like specifically bullies a control meta. You know, mm, yeah. and like encourages control yeah. decks to not be played. That's, that's I don't point. think you ever really want to do that. Mm -hmm. We need six prices, like in Pokemon. Yeah, <laughs> six <laughs> what? Six of my minions. Oh, oh, right, right. Six decks. Oh my god. <laughs> I mean, but crazy. Yeah, I don't know. They also just only bring a single deck to that format. It's it's one deck, and they play best of threes instead of best of fives. So yeah, yeah. It it could be done. It would require just a, com a completely different Hearthstone format. I personally yeah. think it would be really cool to see. Yeah. It's been a long time since we've speed had any, any yeah, I want to see Speed Hearthstone one day. Like, I, 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 I want to do that one day, yeah. Um, I, I, I want them to stop printing infinite value cards like Benedictus that went sent. Uh, well, please. yeah, if, I mean, there's, I don't mind, like, the concept of it. I just don't, I just don't like the fact that it can be looped into infinite. You know, and then we have to set this this artificial limit to games. Um, mm -hmm. So, design wise, I agree, but um, I do. You know, I, I don't mind that the, that you add all these cards, but maybe it's not the entire deck. Maybe it's just like ten to ten cards or something like that, and then it would be a little bit better. But the fact that we have two, we have Dead Man's Hand, and we have Benedictus. I mean, it's just like seriously, guys. I mean. I mean, that's that's where strike format comes in handy. You don't exactly. want to play an hour long quest priest yeah, You're know. playing six rounds today. Ban it. Yeah, that's that's true. Don't do that to yourself. That's true. Um, but anyways, yeah, Tynar again. Congrats to Orange for winning it, and um, you know it's definitely a, a cool event. I think that was the was that a second Tynar event? Maybe I, I can't remember um, how many they've done now, but um, there have been others. I don't yeah. know how many. I know people have had a good time at the at least this this particular event. A lot of people had a, a good time at it. So at least compared to tours, I think a lot of people were just oh, weren't God. super happy about tours. <laughs> Corey, like, how long did it take for you to get home? It took you twenty two hours or something ridiculous. And Gara, how long did it take you to get home? Twenty two hours, but my flight was only one hour. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Just, he he lives oh like God. like. 50x closer than you live <laughs> to the to the actual site and he took the same amount of time to get home that's course crazy. was painful for players and production and talent and everybody absolutely everybody that's not that's not good that's not a good no. sign what not it was not fun though yeah it was, it was fun but it was an it was the first entirely open deck list format for dreamhack and the casters never had deck lists because there was no Wi-Fi. Oh, really? We never once knew what the deck lists were. They didn't print them out for us, and there was no Wi-Fi, so we had oh, no clue. No. That's so bad. Normally, you'd have it, it right? Like in sucked. your, I mean, I mean, I mean, Wi-Fi for you mean the, to get the on laptops, to or you list. mean for your like nobody had Wi-Fi. <laughs> oh, I know, but you only yeah. had your own data. God, you think there would be LAN connections or something there? There, there were so many disconnects. At the at the Swiss. Really? Crazy. Okay. I mean, there's a lot of people on their phone with like their regular data. That's <laughs> not good. So That's not good. Yeah, I, mean, I, I would definitely make sure my I had my data plan running over there too. Oh, it looks like yeah, Fuck Ronnie too said the same thing. <laughs> oh man. Okay, well, just think. Yeah. I, I guess things not to do at a tournament. Man, Maybe they learn. Cora got me hyped about strike format. That was such a good format. <laughs> what was it? Strike, strike was so good. Like I think the last time we had that in Hearthstone was with Amas. I think. What was it? Wait, what's Strike? I, I forget. What what is that again? It's um where you bring your decks and you line them up in all of the possible matchups that could occur, oh, and instead right, of banning right. a deck, you ban matchup. 
Yeah. So if you didn't, if you had a quest priest and your opponent had a quest priest and you didn't want to play the quest priest mirror, you could ban that away. And then you determine the three matchups that you end up playing in the best of five and then just play out those three matchups. Yeah, but so you determine the five matchups, ran, like you just randomly lie your, your decks down. Like each of you guys well, you lie your five decks down and then however they end up matching up, like when you uncover them? Well, or... you're, so say like I have, you know, warrior, druid, priest. And my opponent has warrior druid priest. You can yeah. have a priest warrior matchup. You can have priest druid. Oh, the combinations, right? Exactly. Right. Okay. Yeah, the, all of the combinations, okay. and then you take turns banning combinations. Yeah. Until you have the remaining matchups. That's cool. Yeah, I like that. There's yeah. like a lazy way to do it, where you let's say have two strikes, and then when you're in, you queue a matchup, and then you say, "I use my strike now," like because you don't want to play the matchup. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I guess to save time. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be good. Cool format. Yeah, definitely it's cool so format. Cool. Yeah, we have. Yeah, we always have conquest and LHS as like. The, yeah. yeah, there's always room for more. So hopefully, they'll keep uh, experimenting with more. Um, okay, well we got some Q and A coming up. Before we do, I just want to um, give some love to our supporters, our patrons, of course, on our Patreon that we have at patreoncom town If you guys want to help us continue doing this show each and every week. Uh, go there and make a pledge because that's you know how we are able to pay for things, <laughs> expenses and things that we have for the show. So uh, check that out, uh, patreon.com slash valuetown. We do deck, things like deck of the week with our patrons where we pick a deck and then I have like a 30-minute a, a mini show that I do on Mondays with our patrons. And we just talk about the deck of the week. Everybody can do it. Everybody can submit their results by emailing valuetown at uh, heartsome.net and we'll, we'll kind of take in all the results and talk about them. But the guests on the show are the actual patrons. So we just want to do something special. But also we want to give a shout out to them on the show each and every week. So Mike T, our legendary producer as always, uh, Dave C, Devin Y, Engine S, Grant A, Louise L, Vince F, Alex F, Bruce W, Eric L, another Eric L, and Cody K, Sasha G, and Jake C, just to name a few. Thanks so much, guys. You guys are the best. And, uh, you know, hopefully you guys continue supporting it because, you know, it means a lot to us. Okay, Q&A here. We've got Ahmed, Ahmed N, who is our regular, that always asks us a question each and every week. Thank goodness for him, because he always has something to ask us. Uh, being a top deck in, uh, in a meta requires it to be broken. What it was the weakest best deck in Hearthstone ever? Ooh, that's a good question. The weakest best <sighs> deck. Wow. Um... Hmm. Huh. Dang, that's, that's I, a good question. I don't know. Patron Warrior? You think he was Patron? I think the letter win rate was always super bad from Patron Warrior. That wasn't weak as though. But that's, that's the not... win rate for the the pros that were really, yeah. really good. It was... I would but think it'd be like a control warrior of some sort. It was never the best, Maybe. I think. Yeah, at some point in Hearthstone, it was the best. I think Secret okay. Paladin, for all intents and purposes, is actually quite mediocre in power level. Um, and if you put it in a meta today, it wouldn't... I don't think it would do much. Yeah. And then, oh, like, um... Just like a standard mid-range hunter. Back when it was literally just... Yeah, Sunshine you know, Hunter. Hyena yeah. on two, how Master on four, high main on six. Yeah. And that was the whole deck. But yeah. we had Buzzard and Unleash still. And Hunter's Mark was there. No, I mean, I mean <laughs> well, even <laughs> even after the Buzzard. Even after Buzzard. I forgot like, about Hunter's Mark train. Yeah. Life Coach, Life Coach is... Oh. It wasn't that strong, though, comparatively speaking. Like, it didn't, ha it, it didn't have a crazy burst at the end. It was just, like, straight curve you out. You had unnerfed Leroy, which you also played. With unnerfed yeah. Unleash the Hounds. There was so much damage. With unnerfed Hunter's Mark. Oh, uh, mm. okay, all right, all right. And it was the old bolt that. as well, that. which oh, worked for yeah. your secrets. <laughs> Pretty much all was the that, hunter cards were under. Was that the they, old bow, too? Oh, my yeah. gosh. They changed that's that crazy. when Secret Paladin came out. They that changed that nuts. for League when Mysterious Challenger came out because there would have been bows with, like, eight charges. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it would have yeah. been ridiculous. Yeah. What about Miracle Rogue? Oh, Miracle Rogue was insane. Unnerfed oh, Leroy, Miracle? unnerfed Gadgets in... Mm -hmm. Dude, I'm trying Double to think of anything. I'm trying to think of anything. Blade Blade? Just like... <laughs> that deck was insane. Okay, that was pretty good, yeah. Uh, okay, well, think about 
Force of Nature Savage Roar as a combo, being 14 damage or maximum. If you had Force Double Roar with Unnerfed Innervate, Unnerfed Innervate was really, really strong, but having a two card 14 damage combo, I don't think today would be nearly as scary. But it was the yeah, but it was, it was <laughs> it was crazy. About the they thing. played I mean, yetis on uh, well, they played yetis on one. Yeah, but it, I think we're talking relative, though, right? Like, uh, well, maybe yeah. we're not talking relative. Uh, yeah, we're 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 still talking relative. Like, what what was the thing that was just not like? I like disgusting. secret paladin. Yeah, like secret, paladin, secret, paladin, secret paladin. Yeah, secret paladin is probably the closest thing. I'm trying to think through any it, of the other classes. Even in the meta that secret sure. paladin was most powerful in, it still wasn't. It was maybe. Th Third or fourth best deck, I would think. Yeah. It's just that when you got the nuts curve, it was stupid. Maybe, also, maybe Warlock, like one of Handlock's like, iterations. The pre antique Heelbach Handlock. Yeah, something like that. It was good. It was always, it's always been good. So, like Twilight Drakes and, you know, Ancient Watchers and stuff like that back in that those days I, I think my blast priest is also pretty shitty but it wasn't the best deck in the game yeah it's just like it's so sad like compared to rasika's priest it's a combo <laughs> was it worse. really the best deck though i don't i don't know it was the best my... priest deck but no we're talking about was... best deck like in, in our stone yeah, yeah it was one of the best decks i mean look at titana everyone brought priest it, it was, was top five plus. Oh my goodness. Sure. Okay. All right. And it's very sad. Any actually. of the decks right now, basically. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Any of whatever's yeah, whatever's Shadow, on top Shadow of like for the right day. No. Yeah. Shadowlock. It's so frustrating. I hate that deck, but I love it. But I lose sixty six percent odds a staggering amount of the time. Wait, are, are we missing a Yoxeron deck? Is the Yoxeron deck ever the strongest? Yogg yeah. was in. It was during everything. Temple Mage. Two years, two years ago, right? Yogg Druid, Yogg Mage. Two years ago. I have to look at my sticker. I'll be right yeah. back. Yeah, we maybe, need, we maybe need like, like Mech Mage. Like Mech Mage was really good for a very long. Mech Mage told you. <laughs> the strongest. Mech Mage. Deck? Mech Mage. Yeah, Valencia, Mech 2016. Mage. Mech Mage is so good, though. I mean, I mean, that, that was crazy. Yeah. Good, actually. Yogg was... Druid and Temple Mage. Yeah. Dude, this is like this is Xar's next like, bracket thing. <laughs> like, what's the worst? What's the worst best deck, deck ever? Yeah, exactly. That, that it's it's cool to think. It'd be nice if there was something. I, I don't know if there's any site that actually keeps historical data like on on um you know just just these these kind of decks like uh, maybe Hearthbone. I'm not sure if anybody's collecting this stuff, but it's always cool it's like to look back on. The longer Hearthstone is out, like the more that I start yeah. to forget all of the decks that have, that have existed. I've like, played since open beta, so I've played them all. But you know, it's been so long since Hunter's Mark was nerfed, for instance. I just yeah. forgot that Hunter's Mark was ever zero dang mana. Yeah, like exactly. That's that's absurd. Like Soulfire <laughs> was zero mana. Yeah, that wasn't that long ago, but the Soulfire one. They should do I a tavern ball that was like that, that's beta. They should have done. They should do a tavern ball next that's beta Hearthstone. And, and just like use all those cards again. Eight mana pyroblast freeze mage. Dude, remember three three sun sun uh, clerics or whatever, and and yeah, dark and iron doors. Yeah, dark iron doors used to be plus four plus or uh, four four plus two, permanently. I think it was. Sun fury used to give taunt to everything. Yeah. Oh my War god. War song used crazy. to give charge to. to yep. Yeah. Or anything that was anything that was under, I think it was under a certain attack, right? Like yeah, under it, two or three or whatever it was. Because yeah. it would give charge to it was like the Warsong Molten Giant. Yeah. OTK. None's worse than the none, none's worse than the old Unleashed though. The that old Unleashed combo is the thing that I, I have used the most. The one where you get plus one attack and everything, all your beasts turn, get charge. Yeah. <laughs> Beast Seal Wrath on plus charge. It was like one mana too. <laughs> I think it was one mana. It was just stupid, disgusting. Uh, okay, well, anyways, good question, Ahmed. Uh, Cody CCG. Uh, so there's, I guess there's two questions about Hunter here. I've been playing some Recruit Hunter since last week with some good results. Do you guys think it is solid option or just a Fiesta period? Uh, for me, this expansion, I think it's Fiesta period. But I think it has potential for 
more support? I think the second that, so here's the where I see the meta going. If Token Druid is going to be as dominant as I think it is for the near future, then I think the Warriors will rise up in response because Warpath and Whirlwind effects are so powerful against Token Druid. And then I think the Hunter can really capitalize on the Warriors because mm, yeah. Dire Frenzy onto High Mains and onto just the Big Beast is very powerful against those Control Warrior builds. So I do think in the near future, we could see this deck being really good. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> okay. Easy answer to that one. Yeah, easy answer. Perfect. Um, okay, Conway6288 on Twitter asks, why has Cube Hunter seen a rise in popularity recently? I can't see any advantages that it has over Cube Warlock. Both use Chargers and Big Taunts, but Warlock has Gul'dan and Rin. Both completely insane cards. Hunter just feels too fair, including Spellstone. Spellstone is fair? What? <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> since when <laughs> like as... to craft rexar <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. rexar is not that good? i know rexar is disgusting right now Rexar's so fair, dude. Like, ridiculously good um i mean i think comparing comparing the both is like they're it's like apples and oranges they're they're completely different um if you look at like so you have you know cube doom guards and dark pact in Warlock and in Hunter, you have Cube, Devil Swords, or King Crush, and Play Dead. And Play Dead gets you four total, whereas, <laughs> or um, five pack. total, I guess, once the Cube death rattles. Whereas Dark Pact and Cube in, in Warlock only gets you three total, technically. That math, man. Hunter just has more damage potential. Yeah. And, and you have Katarina and it's cheaper. Yeah, and yeah. you've got. It's more powerful what you do, what you actually do. It's more resilient against um, removal. Yeah. So you're saying Hunter's better than Warlock? Or are you, I mean, are, no, is Hunter that what you're saying? Hunter has the best effective stuff in the game. It's just that everything else Hunter sucks at. Like Hunter has no block, like Hunter has no card draw. Yeah. Hunter is like a lot of it is no health gain yeah. without Rexa. It's like Hunter sucks in everything else. It's just they do the most broken practice stuff. Mm -hmm. And Warlock has a lot of stuff. Yeah. yeah, Warlock has the lead up that Hunter doesn't have. Yeah, that's true. And like life tap. Mm -hmm. So, but it's popular yeah. because of how explosive and, and again how incredible value it has at the end. Just kind of answering Conway. That's that's why it's so good. It, they're just different. They they kind of get there in, in in different ways, and both are great. I mean, both are end games are extremely powerful. So. Mm -hmm. Um, that's, that's the main reason. All right, let me double check to see if there's any other, uh, questions here on Twitter, but if not, I think we can call it, um, let's see. Mm -mm -mm. I think that's it. Yeah, I think that's, uh, it for the questions. Thanks everybody for, uh, writing in. And if you do have any questions for next week, go ahead and email those to valuetown at hearthsim.net and we'll... We'll be sure to read them out. This is for all the folks that you know listen to the pod, uh, the podcast or actually watch the VOD. It's always a chance for everybody to get their questions in each week instead of just the, all the live folks. But uh, yeah, I think that's about all we got today, guys. We're going to wrap up. It's definitely covered a lot of good stuff. Cora's great having you on finally. And um, yeah, it's great having your insight too. Yeah, just keep crushing I, uh, with the shutter walk, yeah. Shaman. It's amazing. <laughs> One two punch. And I've actually been playing cube block today, so oh, cube block. Okay. I don't know. I'm 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 flying to Austin tomorrow, so I yeah. would have liked to have gotten a top 500 finish if I could, but I'm like 1500 right now, so mm -hmm. I don't know if I'll have the time. We'll see. Yeah, Austin will be fun though. Uh, how many times have you been to Austin? Just the one. Really? Um DreamHack Austin last year was my okay. first DreamHack event. Okay. So yeah, yeah, I'm excited to go back. It's just a really cool city, but yeah. it's going to be like 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah. And I'm not looking summers. forward to that. Yeah, it's summers, but you'll be inside most of the time. Make sure you get some barbecue yeah. when when you're out there, because I lived in Austin for a long time. I went to school in Austin and lived there for a oh, long no time. Kidding. So like, I I was hoping to go this year, but then uh, there was a chance that we were going to do a streamer showdown just in the uh, lifestyle area, but mm -hmm. um, didn't come together quick enough. So it might have to be like Atlanta or something like that. But I was like, oh, I want to go to Austin. Give me an excuse to go to Austin. <laughs> And, and I stand everybody. by my statement. If you ever want somebody to yeah. take down Disguise Toast, 
Yeah. Okay. All right. My, my trivia skills are they are primed and ready to go. <laughs> Cora throwing down. The, <laughs> if you would have just been around, you would have totally been on the other day. I was Unfortunately, on a you're plane. on a plane. I know. Unfortunately, oh. you're on a plane. So. Terrace yeah. wiped up again. All right. Well, Eventually. we'll definitely we'll definitely take that in consideration and figure out a time because he needs some some uh, uh, worthy humility. opponents. <laughs> worthy of humility. Wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. No, I love toast. Don't don't think that for a second. I genuinely adore this guy's toast. But yeah, yeah. I also love trivia. Cool. Yeah, for sure. Gar, how about uh, you? Want to do any shout outs or anything? Shout out to all the people going to Drink My Ghost and I'm jealous. I want to go too. <laughs> I was once and it was amazing. Um, yeah, shout out to my Twitter, to my stream, Twitch TV slash Garbage Shaman. I stream every single day. And yeah, it was fun. Super happy that Cora was on the show. It was yeah. super awesome. Yeah. Hopefully, I do it again. we'll see her again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, yeah. It's your final push too, right, Gary? Like in the last day. Mm -hmm. like... I, won't, I won't sleep. Yeah, I won't sleep. That's right. Don't sleep for me. Yeah, I can't wait to hear actually what you what what you okay. end up noticing in terms of you know the trend in the last day or so because I think this might be the most interesting final day that we've seen. Like it won't be, I'll obviously be still stressful for for everybody, but I I feel like it's not going to be just like oh god I either play this deck or this deck and I'm getting you know sniped or I'm getting counter cued and they, you know with anything like that. I feel like that might not be quite the same this time around. Um, but, uh, yeah, good luck to you though. Hopefully you get some good finishes this on, on all three servers and, uh, you get, get a good one there, but, um, I kind of round things out. Thank the two of you guys for doing the show, everybody for watching. You can find us on, um, audio channels too, like iTunes and Google play and soundcloud.com slash champion If you want to listen on the way to work or when you're working out or anything like that, uh, leave us a review. If you enjoy the show too, helps out in people finding the, um, uh, value time whenever they're searching for Hearthstone podcasts. And uh, once again, you know, thank you to ShipStation for sponsoring the show, HSReplay.net, of course, for uh, you know just being the support of the show at this point. And uh, yeah, I think that's going to be it, guys, for Value Town this week. So for Cora, Gara, and myself, Chami MV, we'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs>